Hello, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're delving into the exciting world of artificial intelligence as we embark on a journey to create our very own chatbot using Python. Whether you're a seasoned developer or just starting out, this tutorial will walk you through the process step by step. So, let's dive right in. Before we jump into the coding, let's take a moment to understand the scope of our project. Our chatbot will be capable of understanding and responding to various user inputs, ranging from simple greetings to complex queries and even performing calculations. To achieve this, we'll be leveraging a dataset called intense.json to train our chatbot. In this JSON file, we define various intents. Each intent, represented as a tag, is accompanied by its corresponding patterns and responses. For instance, let's take the first intent, greeting, which contains input patterns like hi, hello, hey, and how are you? Additionally, we provide responses for these patterns such as hello, how can I assist you? Hi there, how can I help you today? Hey, what can I do for you, etc. Expanding upon the JSON file's content, each intent is meticulously defined with its corresponding set of patterns and responses. This meticulous organization facilitates efficient processing and retrieval of information, ensuring that the system can accurately interpret user inputs and generate appropriate responses. Additionally, the JSON file may include various types of greetings, inquiries, commands, or other user intents, each with its distinct set of patterns and responses. This diversity allows the conversational system to cater to a wide range of user interactions, enhancing its versatility and usability. Now, let's start by creating the training.py file. This file will handle the training process of our chatbot. We begin with importing the necessary libraries and modules. These are essentials required for this training process. You need to import libraries such as random, json, pickle, numpy, and nltk. And also requires to import components from TensorFlow's Keras API. Further, we need to import WordNet Lemmatizer from nltk. These are required for lemmatization process of words. It converts words to their base forms and helps us analyze text data more effectively. We're setting up a neural network playground using TensorFlow's Keras API. TensorFlow is a machine learning library, and Keras is an intuitive component within it. First, we're importing Sequential from Keras, which helps us build our neural network layer by layer. Then, we're importing Dense, Activation, and Dropout. Dense layers facilitate the creation of fully connected neural network layers. Activation introduces nonlinear transformations to the network outputs, and dropout regularization helps prevent overfitting. Finally, we're importing SGD, which is an optimizer that helps our model learn during training. These lines of code set up the tools we need to build and train our neural network model. We initialize an instance of WordNet Lemmatizer, which will be used for reducing words to their base or root form, essential for standardizing vocabulary and text analysis tasks. And we loads our intense.json file to a variable using json.loads method. By doing that, it effectively transforms the structured intent data into a format readily accessible within our Python program. This step streamlines the interaction with the intent data, enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of our program's functionality. We start by initializing empty lists, which are words, classes, and documents for later use. Word stores parsed individual words from intent patterns, aiding in feature extraction. Classes catalog unique intent tags, aiding categorization. Documents pairs tokenized word lists with intent tags, forming a structured dataset for training. Additionally, we create ignore letters, a list of punctuation marks, to filter out special characters during pre-processing. Next, we iterate through each intent in the intense JSON data using a for loop. Same way, using a for loop, we should iterate through each pattern in patterns. 
Let's tokenize the patterns first. Tokenizing patterns involves breaking down a given text or pattern into individual words or tokens. Tokenization is a fundamental step in natural language processing tasks. Then add words to the words list. The words are extracted from sentences and patterns by tokenizing them in the previous step. And construct a list of documents containing patterns and their corresponding tags. The documents list that contains tokenized patterns and tags will serve as a valuable resource for training machine learning models and improving natural language processing algorithms. We also update the classes list with unique tags. To do that, we check each tag from the intents, and if it's not already present, we add it to the classes list, thereby ensuring a comprehensive and up-to-date classification system that accurately reflects the evolving nature of our data. This systematic approach guarantees that our classification system remains robust. After pre-processing the data, each word undergoes meticulous lemmatization to ensure uniformity and consistency in our textual representations. This involves mapping each word to its base form, allowing for better analysis and understanding of the text. Following this, we employ a refined approach to remove any ignored characters, thereby enhancing data integrity. By systematically filtering out irrelevant characters or symbols, we ensure that our dataset remains clean and free from noise. The subsequent step involves sorting and eliminating duplicates from both the words and classes lists with precision. Achieved through sorting using Python's built-in sorted function and then converting to sets using set to remove duplicates. This meticulous process ensures that our data is streamlined and duplicates are efficiently managed, leading to more accurate analyses. We then serialize the words and classes lists into pickle files for later use. This step ensures that our meticulously pre-processed data remains easily accessible and portable for future analyses or model training. Utilizing Python's pickle module, we serialize the lists into binary files, preserving their structure and content. By storing the lemmatized words and sorted classes in pickle files, we can efficiently load them into memory when needed, saving valuable computational resources and time during subsequent processing tasks. This serialization process also enhances the reproducibility of our experiments, allowing us to maintain consistency across different runs or environments. The serialized pickle files, containing our processed words and classes, serve as foundational components for our natural language processing pipeline. Moving forward, we initialize empty lists training bag, training output row, and output empty to store our training data. The training bag list accumulates bag of words representations for each dataset sentence, encoding word presence or absence as numerical features. Correspondingly, the training output row list stores output labels for each training instance. Moreover, output empty, initialized with zeros, signifies absence of classes and aligns with the dataset's distinct class count. We iterate through each document, create a bag of words for each pattern, and construct corresponding output rows for training. For each document in our dataset, we initialize an empty list bag to hold the bag of words representation. We extract the word patterns from the document and apply lemmatization to ensure uniformity. Then, for each word in our vocabulary, we check if it is present in the word patterns of the document. If it is, we append 1 to the bag list, otherwise, we append 0, indicating its absence. Simultaneously, we create an output row using the output empty list initialized earlier. We locate the index of the class label associated with the document and set the corresponding element in the output row to 1, representing the presence of that class. We repeat this process for each document, accumulating bag of words representations in corresponding output rows for training. After processing all documents, we convert the list's training bag and training output row into number py arrays for efficient manipulation and further processing. This organized approach ensures that our training data is appropriately formatted and ready for training our natural language processing model. Now, transitioning from the pre-processing stage, we delve into the heart of model selection and architecture design. Selecting the right model architecture is crucial, as it can significantly impact the performance and generalization ability of our NLP system. 
Finally, we add both the bag and the output row to our training dataset, training bag and training output row, respectively. This process effectively converts our text data into numerical vectors, ready for training machine learning models. To ensure the training process generalizes well and avoids biases due to any inherent ordering in the dataset, we take the essential step of shuffling our training data. Leveraging the shuffle function from the sklearn.utils module, we randomize the order of both the input features and the corresponding output labels. By shuffling the data, we break any potential patterns or dependencies that might exist due to the original ordering of the dataset. Ensuring that the model learns robust representations that are applicable across various contexts. This shuffling process promotes better model generalization by exposing it to a diverse range of samples during each training epoch. With our model architecture defined, we proceed to implement it using TensorFlow's Keras API. Leveraging the sequential model, we add layers sequentially to construct our neural network. These layers include dense layers with rectified linear unit activation, which introduce nonlinearity to the model, enabling it to learn complex patterns in the data. ReLU activation is particularly effective in deep neural networks as it helps alleviate the vanishing gradient problem and accelerates convergence during training. Additionally, we incorporate dropout layers to mitigate overfitting by randomly dropping a fraction of the input units during training, thus reducing the model's reliance on specific features. Dropout regularization acts as a form of ensemble learning within the network. Promoting robustness by preventing co-adaptation of neurons and improving the model's ability to generalize to unseen data. By introducing randomness during training, dropout helps prevent the model from memorizing noise in the training data and encourages the learning of more robust features. Once the layers are added, we compile the model using the stochastic gradient descent optimizer, configuring it with a learning rate of 0.01, momentum of 0.9, and Nesterov momentum. SGD is a widely used optimization algorithm for training neural networks, known for its simplicity and effectiveness. By incorporating momentum, the optimizer accelerates gradient descent in relevant directions and dampens oscillations, leading to faster convergence and smoother optimization trajectories. Nesterov momentum enhances SGD by adjusting the update direction based on a future estimate of the gradient, further improving convergence speed and stability. For the loss function, we utilize categorical cross-entropy, suitable for multi-class classification tasks like ours, and we monitor training progress using accuracy as our evaluation metric. Categorical cross-entropy measures the discrepancy between the predicted probability distribution and the true distribution of class labels, providing a clear signal for the model to minimize during training. Meanwhile, accuracy serves as a straightforward metric to assess the model's performance on the training data, representing the proportion of correctly classified instances. This compilation step finalizes the model setup, making it ready for training with our pre-processed data. We embark on the training phase, a crucial step in the development of our neural network-based natural language processing model. We utilize the training data to iteratively update the model's parameters, enhancing its ability to understand and interpret textual data effectively. The training process involves exposing the model to batches of input-output pairs derived from the training data set, allowing it to learn from the patterns and relationships present in the data. We opt for a training duration of 200 epochs, indicating the number of times the entire training data set is processed by the model. This extended training period enables the model to gradually refine its representations and minimize the training loss, ultimately improving its performance on unseen data. During each epoch, we feed the training data to the model in batches, with each batch containing five samples. This choice of batch size strikes a balance between computational efficiency and optimization effectiveness. Ensuring that the model receives sufficient exposure to diverse examples while maintaining manageable memory requirements by training the model over multiple epochs with small batches. We enable it to explore a wide range of parameter configurations and adapt its internal representations to better capture the underlying structure of the data. Finally, we print done to the console, signaling the completion of the training process. This concise notification serves as a reassuring indicator to the user. Let's kick off the training process by executing this Python program. 
We're about to embark on a transformative journey where our neural network will learn from data and evolve its comprehension skills. Through 200 epics of training, we'll immerse our model in a world of text, guiding it to grasp the intricacies of language patterns. With each batch of five samples, it will refine its understanding, honing its abilities to interpret context and meaning. As we monitor its progress, observing the fluctuations in loss and the rise in accuracy, we'll witness the transformation firsthand. Now, let's delve into the creation of the chatbot.py file, the cornerstone of our interactive chatbot system. This Python script will serve as the central hub where all the magic happens. To start off, we'll import a variety of essential libraries and modules. These include JSON, Random, Pickle, Numpy, and lastly Colorama which is for adding color to our text output, making the chatbot's responses visually appealing. Let's initialize the Colorama module, enhancing our chatbot's responses with vibrant colors. Then, we'll define two variables and assign them distinct colors, green and blue. Furthermore, we'll leverage NLTK library, and within NLTK, we'll utilize the WordNet Lemmatizer for word lemmatization, a process that helps standardize words to their base or root form. Additionally, we'll make use of TensorFlow's load model function, enabling us to seamlessly load our pre-trained chatbot model. Following that, we initialize an instance of WordNet Lemmatizer, a key component for standardizing words to their base or root form, aiding in the chatbot's understanding of user input. Additionally, we load the contents of intense.json into the intense variable, which contains predefined patterns and responses for our chatbot to learn from. Moreover, we load pre-processed words and classes from pickle files generated during training. These files serve as a bridge between the training and inference phases, encapsulating vital information about the vocabulary and classes used during model training. By loading these files, we ensure consistency and compatibility between the data processing steps employed during training and those required for inference. This seamless transition enables our chatbot to effectively apply the knowledge acquired during training to respond intelligently to user queries in real time. Alongside, we load the pre-trained model from the IntelliChatModel.h5 file. A pivotal step that equips our chatbot with the ability to apply the knowledge and insights gained during the training process. By loading this pre-trained model, our chatbot inherits the neural network's learned representations and weights, allowing it to efficiently process user inputs and generate contextually relevant responses. Moving on, we define several essential functions to handle various aspects of user interaction and chatbot response generation. Beginning with the cleanup sentence function, its role is pivotal in preparing user input for further analysis. By tokenizing and lemmatizing the words within a given sentence, cleanup sentence standardizes the input. Reducing variations in word forms and enhancing the chatbot's ability to understand diverse user queries. Tokenization involves breaking down the input sentence into individual words or tokens, facilitating subsequent analysis. Meanwhile, lemmatization ensures that each word is transformed into its base or root form, promoting consistency and enabling the chatbot to recognize synonymous expressions in variations of words. Moving on to the BOW function, it plays a pivotal role in transforming textual data into a format that can be effectively processed by machine learning algorithms. This function serves as a critical intermediary step between raw text input and the predictive model, facilitating the conversion of textual information into numerical representations. The BOW function operates by generating a bag of words representation for a given sentence. This representation captures the frequency of each word in the sentence, providing a concise yet informative summary of its content. To accomplish this, the function begins by tokenizing the input sentence, breaking it down into individual words or tokens. This tokenization process enables the chatbot to parse and analyze the textual input at a granular level, treating each word as a distinct unit of analysis. Following tokenization, the BAL function constructs a vector representation known as the bag of words vector. This vector encapsulates the frequency of each word in the input sentence, effectively quantifying the presence or absence of specific words within the text. 
By disregarding word order and focusing solely on word frequency, the bow vector provides a simplified yet informative representation of the textual content. Capturing essential information about the semantic meaning and context of the input. Once the bag of words vector is constructed, it serves as a foundational input for the chatbot's predictive model. This numerical representation enables the model to analyze and interpret the textual input. Identifying patterns and associations between words to make informed predictions about the user's intent or query. By leveraging the bow representation, the chatbot can effectively bridge the gap between raw text data and actionable insights, facilitating meaningful interactions and responses. Let's delve into the predict class function, a critical component of our chatbot's predictive model. This function is responsible for leveraging the pre-trained model to predict the intent or class of a given sentence, providing valuable insights into the user's query or input. The predict class function begins by utilizing the bag of words representation generated by the bow function to encode the input sentence into a numerical format suitable for analysis. This encoding process captures essential information about the presence and frequency of words within the input, enabling the chatbot to extract meaningful features from the text data. Once the input sentence is encoded, the predict class function passes the encoded representation to the pre-trained model for prediction. The model then applies its learned parameters and representations to analyze the input and generate a probability distribution over the possible intents defined in the chatbot's training data. This distribution provides insights into the likelihood of each intent being associated with the input sentence, allowing the chatbot to identify the most probable intent or query category. To enhance the accuracy and reliability of predictions, the predict class function incorporates an error threshold mechanism. This mechanism filters out predictions with low confidence levels, ensuring that only intents with sufficiently high probabilities are considered. By setting an appropriate error threshold, we can control the sensitivity of the prediction process and improve the overall robustness of the chatbot's predictive model. Upon generating the predictions, the predict class function organizes the results into a structured format, presenting each predicted intent along with its corresponding probability score. This structured output enables the chatbot to interpret and utilize the predictions effectively, facilitating the generation of contextually relevant responses to user queries. In summary, the predict class function serves as a vital component of our chatbot's inference pipeline, enabling it to analyze user inputs, predict underlying intents or query categories, and generate appropriate responses. By leveraging machine learning techniques and model inference, this function empowers our chatbot to understand and respond intelligently to user interactions, enhancing the overall user experience and interaction quality. To further optimize the predict class function's performance, we delve into refining its underlying mechanisms to enhance accuracy and reliability. One significant aspect involves continuous improvement through iterative testing and validation procedures. By employing techniques such as cross-validation and performance evaluation metrics, we assess the model's effectiveness and identify areas for enhancement. This iterative refinement process allows us to continually improve the predictive accuracy and reliability of the chatbot, ensuring it consistently delivers high-quality responses to user queries. Moreover, alongside continuous refinement, we focus on enhancing the scalability and efficiency of the predict class function. This involves optimizing the computational resources utilized during the prediction process to ensure swift and seamless responses to user inputs. Techniques such as model pruning, which involves removing unnecessary parameters or connections from the model, and model quantization, which reduces the precision of numerical representations to reduce memory footprint, contribute to the efficiency of the predict class function. Let's explore the getResponse function, a crucial component that facilitates the generation of meaningful responses from our chatbot. This function plays a pivotal role in enhancing the conversational capabilities of our chatbot by retrieving appropriate responses based on the predicted intent or query category. The getResponse function begins by receiving the predictions generated by the predict class function. These predictions contain information about the most probable intent or query category associated with the user input, 
providing valuable context for generating a relevant response. Next, the function accesses the intents JSON data, which contains predefined patterns and responses for various intents. By traversing through this JSON data, the function identifies the specific intent or query category predicted by the model. Once the target intent is identified, the getResponse function selects a random response from the list of predefined responses associated with that intent. This randomization ensures that our chatbot's responses remain diverse and dynamic, enhancing the naturalness and variability of the conversation. Finally, the function returns the selected response, which is then presented to the user as the chatbot's reply. By leveraging the getResponse function, our chatbot can effectively generate contextually relevant responses to user queries, fostering engaging and meaningful interactions. In summary, the getResponse function serves as a crucial component in our chatbot's response generation pipeline, enabling it to deliver appropriate and varied responses based on the predicted intent or query category. Let's discuss the chatbot response function, a key component in our chatbot's interaction loop. This function serves as the interface between user inputs and the chatbot's response generation process. The chatbot response function begins by invoking the predict class function to predict the intent or category of the user's input text. Once the intent is determined, the function calls the get response function to retrieve an appropriate response based on the predicted intent. Finally, the chatbot response function returns the selected response, which is then presented to the user as the chatbot's reply. Let's explore the intricate workings of the while loop, the central mechanism through which our chatbot interacts with users and responds to their queries. This loop serves as the heartbeat of our chatbot, orchestrating the flow of conversation and dynamically adapting to user inputs through logical decision-making using if-else statements. At the core of the while loop lies a relentless pursuit of user engagement and satisfaction. As the loop iterates endlessly, the chatbot awaits user input with anticipation ready to spring into action at a moment's notice. Upon receiving a user input, the loop springs into action, embarking on a journey of logical evaluation to determine the appropriate response. First and foremost, the loop scrutinizes the input to identify specific keywords such as quit, exit, or close. If any of these keywords are detected, the loop gracefully exits, bringing the chatbot session to a close and bidding adieu to the user. But the loop's quest for engagement doesn't stop there. It delves deeper, probing the user's input for mathematical expressions that beckon for evaluation. With an eagle eye for numerical values and mathematical symbols, the loop discerns the telltale signs of arithmetic operations awaiting resolution. With precision and finesse, it employs the eval function to calculate the result, delivering an answer that satisfies the user's mathematical curiosity. Yet, the loop's journey is far from over. It ventures further, traversing the realms of natural language processing to unravel the mysteries concealed within the user's words. Through the invocation of the chatbot response function, the loop embarks on a quest to predict the intent or category of the user's input, unlocking a treasure trove of predefined responses that await discovery. And so, the loop continues its ceaseless dance of interaction, navigating the vast expanse of user queries and responses with grace and agility. With each iteration, it forges a deeper connection with the user, fostering engagement and enriching the conversational experience. As the loop persists in its quest for meaningful interaction, it remains vigilant, ever ready to decipher the nuances embedded within the user's messages. With each iteration, it refines its understanding of human language, honing its ability to discern intent and context with increasing accuracy. Moreover, the loop's adaptability shines through as it navigates the dynamic landscape of user queries and responses. It seamlessly transitions between modes of operation, effortlessly switching gears from mathematical computation to natural language understanding all in the pursuit of delivering a seamless and intuitive conversational experience. In conclusion, the while loop encapsulates the essence of our chatbot's functionality, embodying the fusion of human ingenuity and machine intelligence. Through its unwavering dedication to user engagement and satisfaction, the loop paves the way for a future where human and machine coexist harmoniously.
bridging the gap between artificial intelligence and human interaction. Let's execute our chatbot application to witness its functionality in action. Throughout this demonstration, we'll engage in a series of interactions with the chatbot, posing questions and receiving responses to explore its capabilities. As we initiate the chatbot, it eagerly awaits our input for offering its assistance. We can ask a variety of questions, ranging from inquiries about its identity and operations to requests for jokes and mathematical calculations. With each question posed, the chatbot responds promptly and informatively, showcasing its ability to understand and address a diverse range of queries. Whether it's providing information about itself, delivering a witty joke to lighten the mood, or performing arithmetic calculations with precision, the chatbot demonstrates its versatility and utility as a virtual assistant. As our conversation unfolds, we observe the seamless interaction between human and machine, facilitated by the chatbot's intuitive design and robust functionality. Each exchange contributes to a dynamic and engaging dialogue, illustrating the potential of artificial intelligence to enhance human-computer interaction. In conclusion, our demonstration of the chatbot application underscores the power and potential of artificial intelligence to streamline communication and provide valuable assistance in various domains. Thank you for watching this demonstration and subscribe for more exciting content in the future.